Welcome to my lecture online. Now that we have a covariance matrix for three data sets, which means along the diagonals we have the variances of the three data sets, and the off-diagonal elements represents the covariances between the various data sets. Now we're going to calculate the correlation coefficients. Again, for each covariance, we should have an appropriate correlation coefficient. Remember that the correlation coefficients always will be between negative 1 and 1, never smaller than negative 1, and never larger than 1. A 1 and a negative 1 means this perfect correlation between the data sets. Anything else is less than a perfect correlation. If it's 0, that means that one data set is completely random relative to the other data set. All right, let's see what these end up being. Uh, notice that I don't have any numbers written down, but I have the matrix and I have my translation of the matrix so I can find all the covariances and I can find all the variances that I need. First, the correlation coefficient between the two data sets X and Y. So we need the covariance of X and Y, which is this number right here, which is 12. And we divide that by the square root of the variance of X, which is 8, and the variance of Y, which is 18. Hmm, okay. So that means the square root of 8 times the square root of 18. And let's see what that's equal to. So we have 12 divided by the square root of 8 and divided by the square root of 18. And we get, wow, we get exactly 1. Well, that's kind of interesting because that would indicate that there's perfect correlation between those two data sets. Let's take a look at them. Well, here we have. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So the first data set is increasing by twos and perfectly by twos. It's two more each time. And the second data set is increasing as well, but by threes and it's perfect as well. 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9, plus 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15. So they're both correlated perfectly to one another. That's what that means. Therefore, a correlation coefficient of 1. We could not tell that by looking at the covariance. We have a variance of 8 and a variance of 18. So with a variance of 12, we did not realize that there was a perfect correlation between the two data sets. But finding the correlation coefficient indicates that indeed they are perfectly correlated to one another. Now let's take a look at our second calculation, the covariance of xz, which is minus 8, divided by the square root of the variance of x, which is 8, times the square root of the variance of z, which is 8. Well, look, that gives us 8, goes into negative 8, which is equal to negative 1. Well, there we have a situation where, again, there's perfect correlation, but one data set is increasing while the other data set is decreasing. Notice that this data set is increasing by 2, and this data set is decreasing by 2, 9, 7, 5, 3, 1. So therefore, again, that perfect correlation between the two, and therefore, we have a negative 1 correlation factor. Now, could we have uh, seen that by looking at the numbers? So, for the covariance of xz, which is right here, we get a negative 8, with a, a variance of 8 for x and a variance of 8 for z. There, indeed, we kind of could have looked at it and realizing if the two variances are 8 and the covariance is negative 8, then yes, we would have a perfect correlation of negative 1 when you kind of look at that calculation. All right, let's take a look at our third covariance. Uh, I'm, I'm not covariance, but our correlation coefficient. So the covariance yz, or zy, that's the same number, is negative 12. And we divide that by the variance of x, which is 8, and the variance of z, which is 8 as well. Let's see what that is equal to. So we have, well, that would be negative 12 divided by 8. Something is not right here. Ha ha ha. See, because I ended up with a number that's going to be larger. Well, the magnitude was, would be larger than 1, which is impossible. But then I realized I made a mistake here. Because this should be the variance of y, not the variance of x. How did I know that? Because when I calculate that, I would have gotten negative 1.5, which is impossible for a correlation coefficient. So I knew something was wrong somewhere. That's right here. So the variance of y is right here, which is 18. And let's see what we get. I think I'm thinking we're going to get a negative 1 again. Let's try that. So we have 12 divided by the square root of 18 divided by the square root of 8. And sure enough, 
we end up with a negative 1. So again, perfect correlation between the two data sets. Negative means that one is increasing while the other one is decreasing. So we'll look at the Y data set, which is increasing by threes. The Z, the Z data set, which is decreasing by twos. Therefore, again, the perfect correlation between the two data sets. And again, could we have seen that by looking at correlation factors? The covariance of YZ is negative 12. The variances are 18 and 8. It would have been 18 and 8, I should look at these two. And again, that would have been difficult to see by just looking at the covariance, but calculating the the correlation coefficient, it makes it obvious that the correlation is absolutely perfect. Negative 1 and 1, perfect correlation, and that is how it's done. What happens with data set that's not the same number of data? The not the same number of data? Yeah, let's see if that Z has six data points. Then you can't find the covariance. No. <laughs> <laughs> so there, that's a good point. So yes, you're, you're expected here to have the same number of elements in the data sets. That's a good point that you're bringing up. So there's different ways of looking at it. Most of the time when this is used in tracking algorithms, you're always going to get one element of each. So the numbers are always going to be lined up. If it's going to be of various populations where you just take a subset of each population, then you want to take the same size subset, otherwise you can't calculate the covariances, yes. So in that case, if you do it over two data sets which are different, you just take a representative sample of each, and then you get, again, the same number you can work with. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's how it's done. All right, what's next?